Welcome to my shop. I'm going to take you through my process for using the Agner thickness stop for styles and rails of cabinet doors. This is the uh, profile uh, specifications that I'm working towards here. So I'll show you the uh, tooling set that I'm using here. It's a braised carbide tooling from Freeborn Tool Company in Washington State. I'm using a Copen pattern set here that is for one and a quarter inch bore spindle. This will handle material from three quarters to one and an eighth inch thick. And this is the profile right over here that I'm using for this demonstration. Um, I'm actually using it with a top hat bushing, top and bottom, and the three cutters that I've got installed um, on the spindle, since my spindle is 30 millimeters in diameter. So that's the cutter set. For this style and rail um, frame and panel style door um, operation, I'll show you how I go about setting up the shaper um, to, to actually machine the profile for the styles and rails on the inside edge. Uh, the first thing I do is, of course, is mount up the tooling uh, on the spindle, get that locked down, and then I want to bring the fence plates tangent to the outside diameter of the cutter. So in this case, I've got um, a cutter that is 100 millimeters in diameter. Not that that particularly matters, but I want to get the fence plates parallel with the largest diameter of the outside of the cutter. I use a little piece of aluminum um, angle here. The aluminum is soft enough that it's not going to damage the carbide cutters if I happen to bang into them with it, but it is straight. Um, and I think I've got this pretty well set up here. You can see that the one tooth on this cutter here is just slightly dragging that um, angle back and forth a little bit. So I'm going to consider the fence plates uh, now tangent to the outside diameter of that cutter. So this is a 100 millimeter cutter. Uh, the smallest uh, part of the cutter is the, called the cutting circle and I know that that is um, exactly 3 eighths of an inch closer to the center line of the spindle than the outside diameter. I know that from experience. I can, you can also look it up for most cutters. So the next thing I'm going to do is reposition the fence to the uh, cutting circle uh, tangent there. You can see I've got the fence position zeroed out here and 3 eighths of an inch is roughly 9.5 millimeters. So I'll move the, the fence towards the center line of the spindle 9.5 millimeters. Now if I weren't using the thickness stop as a back fence and doing this profiling operation against the fence, I'd be all set to run the material through here. Now of course with this setup I run the risk that we're going to have lead in snipe as the material is pulled into the cutter or <clears throat> pushed out from the cutter as it comes in. Um, there's always the risk that you're going to have trailing snipe as this end goes out and the back end kicks in. So that's the beauty of using the back fence. You don't have those kinds of problems. So I want to make sure, since I'm using the back fence here to guide the material, I want to make sure I get a full profile cut on here. And I'm going to be bringing it to size as, as the material is moving by the cutter. By size, I mean the final width. So in order to ensure I get a full depth of cut on here, just for insurance purposes, I'm going to move the fence in one more millimeter to ten and a half. That's good. Ten seven, that's fine too. And now the fence is positioned uh, properly to set up the uh, the rest of the the thickness stop and the pressure jaws, which we'll get to. In now let's focus on the actual re required width of the style and rails. Uh, once the profiling operation is done. In this case, I'm going to shoot for, my standard is 68 millimeters. Um, you know, yours could be whatever. Um, so uh, that's the finished width, full width of the style or rail component once profiled on the inside edge that I'm after. So now I'm going to set up the 
thickness stop fence position so that this cutter um, will produce a finished result that actually matches my, my goal. Now remember, this fence is one millimeter further in than the cutting circle of the small diameter of the cutter. So I'm gonna add one millimeter to uh, this in terms of my fence position. So I wanna get the fence here, the thickness stop, about 69 millimeters away from the actual fence plates here. So I'm gonna move the thickness stop fence forward to that position, and I'm gonna call that good right there. We're gonna run a trial cut at that position and then measure that, and then we'll know um, what kind of an offset we need to, to do in terms of either moving the fence forward or back. We'll come back to that in a second. Before I run a test cut on the material here, I wanna get this fence plate repositioned to accommodate the pressure jaws. So let me bring the pressure jaws down for a second. And you'll see that this gap now has been reduced considerably. We're at about 50 millimeters between the, the um, outside springy edge of the pressure jaw and the uh, thickness stop fence. So we couldn't get material through here if we wanted to. So the rule of thumb here is that the pressure jaws are 20 millimeters thick, approximately. So I displace the shaper hood and the fence plates and all that back 20 millimeters to accommodate for the thickness of the pressure jaw system. The pressure jaws are intended to keep the material that's being fed through here uh, pushed outward against the thickness stop back fence. So I'm going to reposition the fence now. Get the pressure jaws out of the way. Our fence position is at 10.7. We're going to go to 30.7. That'll give us the 20 millimeters we're after. 30.8, that's good enough. Now I can lock down the shaper hood with the kip levers and get that secure. Now we can run a, t a sample test cut here um, just for an inch or two to measure what, what we've got here in terms of an actual final width. So here's the results of our little short test cut against the thickness stop. And uh, now you can check the profile, make sure we're getting full cut. I see evidence here with this notch that we're getting the extra millimeter depth of cut. So we know we're getting the full profile machined into this edge here. I can also look at the position of the spindle vertically and make a determination uh, whether I want to change that. In this case, this reveal is a little too much for me, that first notch in this profile, so I'll be moving the spindle up probably about a millimeter to accommodate for that. But the um, important thing here is do we have the back fence or the thickness stop positioned correctly to get the kind of uh, width, final width we want here. So let's just measure this. And if you can see that, we're at 69.28 millimeters and our goal is 68. So that says to me that this thickness stop needs to go towards the spindle. What do we say? 1.3, 1.37 millimeters. I'll set the camera up and show you how we do that. So I have the uh, thickness stop bar against the thickness stop here, and it's locked with the red kip lever. So that's, uh, now we need to move the bar itself forward 1.37 millimeters. So the first thing I'm gonna do is move the fence physically out of the way so that I can actually reposition that bar. Now I'm going to zero out the digital readout. Let's see if you can, I'll bring you in here a little closer. There we go. I'm going to lock the, the gray kip lever and the black kip lever. Now I can use the micro adjust. First I have to unlock the bar. And now I can move, use the micro adjust to actually move the bar forward the 1.37 millimeters right there. Now I can 
come back a little bit there. Now I can use the red kip lever to lock that down. And this bar has now been moved 1.37 millimeters towards the spindle. We can bring the thickness stop back against the bar. Make sure this red kip lever is solidly um, secured. And now we should be in good position to run the cut. I'm going to run another test cut just to prove that we got where we wanted to be. Here's the second test cut. You can see we're getting full profile being cut into the material here. We've got dish dished out section there. So, and I actually moved the spindle up a little bit to reduce this profile height for that little ridge there. Um, let's check our final width here. 68 right on the money. 60, 68 right on the money. So I've got the feeder set up between the pressure jaws and the thickness stop. I've put on narrow tires, um, which for this width profile is required to get the, the tire to fit between the pressure jaws and the thickness stop. Remember we're dealing with 70 millimeter wide stock here. Um, so let's run this profile and then we'll see what we get. see the narrow tire set up on my feeder. This is the standard width tire. You can actually run these on the inside or the outside or in tandem so you can have two wheels, uh, two tires per spindle on this kind of feeder. This is a Comatic. So here's our profiled piece. Uh, I've checked it. It's flat, straight, etc. Let's see how we did on final width here. Sixty-eight oh three. I call that good. Here's a little closer look at the final setup with the the fence position and the pressure jaws in position. You can see this tire is just too fat to fit in there. Anyway, that's how I would use the thickness stop and the pressure jaws and all that to profile material and bring it to final thickness. I hope this helps. Here's some pictures of the uh, final doors after they were assembled and finish applied. Thanks for watching.